In this video interview, Financial IT talks to Michelle Roig of Fingerprints, one of the leading biometrics companies. Today, he talks about the missions, challenges, and trends in the world of biometrics. Hello, my name is Aya Karliva, and thank you for joining us for this interview for Financial IT. Thank you for, for having me. My name is uh, Michelle Roig. I'm the senior vice president of our business line, Payments and Access. So I'm in charge of uh, running our payments and access division of uh, the company, uh, Swedish company Fingerprint Cards. How is biometric technology helping to adapt to the new normal? How do you make things secure without imposing too much friction for the consumer? And, and convenience is obviously top of mind for consumers. And, and we think really biometrics uh, enables that. You keep the security and you keep it frictionless and, and you make it very convenient. In the recent times we are in right now, right? The new normal, people still need that security, but they need to keep their convenience. One thing that we're seeing a, a big change on is obviously, how do you now also tackle the safe and hygienic factor, not only the security and convenience. Contactless payments uh, on, on mobile payments uh, on devices like Apple Pay and so on, where you're actually authenticating yourself through biometrics on the device. That's a way now to avoid pin pads, touching things. Uh, and we see that propagating to your building, to your workplace, to your computer, without touching things that other people also touch. A key fob, a USB dongle, any type of device that is personal that you are the main user of that can still authenticate you for access or payments, we think is rising and is sort of something that is pushing this this new normal. This will stay, right? People will have this in mind. People want to avoid things that are touched by many people, but still they need the security and convenience. So we think uh, that's something where biometrics can play a, a huge role going forward. The COVID-19 pandemic accelerated these contactless payments. And will these biometric payment cards ride the contactless wave too? Obviously, we've been working on this biometric payment card for a while, uh, and we were seeing strong momentum gathering already last year with, with a lot of trials, over 20 market trials ongoing with, with banks. The WHO was, was pushing uh, the use of contactless to avoid cash and avoid touching pin pads. Uh, there's been a lot of industry uh, momentum raising the cap so people would use uh, contactless even more. And biometrics, of course, is just the la last bit of peace needed to make it fully convenient and, and, and secure because you still have a transaction cap, even though they've raised it, you still have concern. Uh, and then now people don't want to touch the pin pads at all. If you're above the limit, you still need to touch it. Uh, you have the mandate of PSD2. Then of course, we also need to get rid of the confinements where we are and we need to get people out and, 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 uh, and consuming again. So that's sort of the, the drawback, but I think the need uh, for biometrics is just increasing. And I think it's just a matter of time as we will see this explode. What trends and challenges are shaping the industry? Part of PSD2 being strong customer authentication. I mean, that's, that's one trend where we're seeing uh, mandates uh, that still impose quite some challenges, right? For you who don't know what that is, uh, maybe just give a, a quick a brief on, on the SCA. Basically, there's a mandate in Europe, right, to, to have a strong customer authentication. And for payments, that means you need to identify yourself with a strong, it's not just enough to have your device, you need to have a PIN or something else, right? Biometrics then replaces the PIN, so it keeps its convenience, right? Uh, and with that, uh, you basically can avoid uh, the current situation where either after five taps of contactless, you need to still put your pin, or once you reach a certain transaction limit, you still need to put your pin. Uh, with biometrics, each transaction is authenticated. So you, you create a seamless user experience, a seamless, convenient payment uh, methodology for the consumers. So the trends are make it simple, make it convenient, uh, and make it consistent. Today, because of these different situations, you have slightly different user experiences. In some countries, there's a certain limit on the transactions. In other countries, it's higher or lower. Uh, you have this fallback to PIN or enter the card. You have many different variants. And we believe that consumers want consistency. They want a simple user experience uh, and, and they want simplicity. Those are sort of the trends. We believe, of course, that biometrics solves this because you will get a unified user experience uh, because you're as I said, you're always authenticating your transactions. So you can deploy this 
globally without changing uh, user behavior, basically. Everything will be connected, more and more connections out there. A lot of the connected points are consumer goods, consumer products that will be connected. You have all, everything about smart homes, smart locks, uh, smartphones, smart devices that are connected, where you're doing access, you're doing payments. Uh, all these endpoints and connections need to be secured. Uh, and for those that are consumer centric, where, where people interact with the devices, uh, the hassle of pins and passwords doesn't make sense. So biometrics there, of course, will be a huge trend in the combination of, of another mega trend, which is being IoT and connected devices. Thank you for taking the time to meet up and you know, talk about biometrics and technology and fingerprints, the fingerprints company. I appreciate uh, having me on board and it's always nice to talk to you guys.